And Tichuk, there have been so many pronouncements over the last number of days uh, that it's difficult to comprehend, and the many, many people out in the streets are looking on with some disbelief, really, at all of the pronouncements and declarations about the mortgage crisis, given that it's been two years uh, since the government took office, uh, one has come to the conclusion, and I think people are coming to the conclusion, that really it's the imminence of the by-election uh, that has caused uh, the sudden series of announcements from government in relation to what is now uh, a full-blown crisis and the realisation in government that it is a full-blown crisis which needs to be tackled urgently. Now, you teachers are going to tarnish that, have committed to uh, bringing in legislation to facilitate uh, repossessions of, of, of family homes. I mean, you made that statement categorically uh, last week. Now, the Secretary General of the Department of Finance, John Morton, uh, I think added to that, uh, and he said very clearly to the Doyle Committee that you could not expect the taxpayer to subsidise them, meaning the people in arrears, to subsidise them to remain in a house that is beyond their means, uh, given uh, an unnaturally low level uh, of repossessions. Uh, the Deputy Labour Party were furious with this remark and immediately set out to try and rubbish the Secretary General and to hang him out um, to dry. Indeed, the leading member of the Labour Party, Mr Jack O'Connor, said the Secretary General's comments were reprehensible and barbaric, if you don't mind. Now, Minister Michael Noonan said, on the other hand, that the Secretary General, he's the accounting officer, and he has to be honest when he's asking questions, or answering, or when he's asked questions. Now, I don't know whether he meant that the Labour ministers and top people didn't actually have to tell the truth all the time when they're asking or answering questions uh, in relation to that. But I think Minister Brian Hayes really, uh, I think he put a tin hat on it when he said, uh, you know, we cannot have necessary recovery, he said, without the stick, he said, the stick of <coughs> dealing with people who are in houses they can no longer afford. Now, Tisha, I'm going to put to you that the government is facilitating the banks all the way here. A billion euros was given back last week uh, to the banks. Under the personal insolvency bill, the banks retain a veto over all restructuring deals with clients and with customers. Now, I've met uh, in Ashburn last week a young couple. Thank you, Deputy. We're working over and time, working, please, just one please. second, please, Claire, who wanted to engage with the, with the bank. And all the bank did was raise the bar, uh, preventing any discussion. Similarly, with another young woman uh, looking after a mother who's also in arrears but who wants to deal, the bar was raised again. Teaching the banks are not engaging with people. They're intimidating young couples. In one case, a young couple was told, look, when your interest only uh, ends, you. Um, you sh you, you'd better be thinking about selling on your house. That's what's going on on the ground in reality, teacher. And I would put it to the government. I want to ask you, teacher, does Mr. Morden enjoy the full confidence of the entire government? Thank of you. the entire government. And will you please explain to the House why you are insisting that the banks retain a veto over all restructuring deals with its banks? Because I would you. argue strongly it <coughs> needs independent oversight. I don't think it's appropriate for the Minister, for, for anybody in here, to, uh, to publicly castigate a public servant. Uh, if, you, if you look at the, if you look at the, um, at the repeat of the, uh, uh, of the committee where the, where the Secretary General attended, he was actually uh, commended for his forthrightness and for the detail into which he went, dealing with the matters that were raised before him. I'd just like to say to you, um, Deputy Martin, there are 100,000 people out there who have problems with their mortgages. These 100,000 people are in limbo. The uh, impact and the effect of what the government want to do here is to bring about clarity for those people in respect of their houses, and their position, and how they can plan for the future. And the wall of, uh, the wall of allegation uh, about whole scale uh, whole-scale house repossessions, uh, nothing could be further from the truth. The position here is that government over the last two years have worked very hard in restructuring the banks, in recapitalizing the banks, in making arrangements through the Ryan report for different, uh, different strategies uh, that can be adopted by banks in bringing in a resolution to the mortgage difficulties for, for each individual person, and they are all unique, and they are all particular circumstances, including the uh, complexity of the uh, insolvency bill, which is now uh, passed through the houses, uh, and which agency will open its doors during the summer. The, um, the, um, the impact of what you're suggesting is that the bank guarantee should be continued. 
And I'm not sure now whether you want to expand the disastrous uh, situation that you had previously by extending that all over Europe. Uh, the situation here has been very clear and made very clear by the Minister for Finance. What the government want to do here is to bring about situations where these 100,000 people who have pressure every day and every week in respect of their mortgage um, problems can have those resolved satisfactorily through a variety of opportunities and methods that are there now. The last of which, the last of which to be considered uh, is the case of house repossessions. So what we want to see, Deputy Martin, is the vast, vast majority of those 100,000 people happy in the knowledge that a resolution has been brought about in restructuring their mortgage arrangement to which the bank or the lender and they as client will adhere to in a new format and in a new way that gives them the opportunity to live their lives and plan their lives without this pressure that's been there for the last number of years, which came about, of course, as a result of disastrous policies produced before. But it also allows for those 100,000 people to be able to contribute to their local economy and, as a consequence, to their country. So what we're, af what we're after here, Deputy Martin, is a situation where the vast, vast majority of these can be resolved, restructured, reconfigured without consideration of, uh, of house repossessions. I'm quite sure that you understand that very well indeed. Thank you. Teacher, you, didn't <coughs> you didn't answer the question I asked, which is why is the government insisting on the banks retaining a veto over all restructuring deals with people and with customers? Why are you insisting on the banks having the veto? Because I have outlined to you, Tishik, I was in Ashburn last week, a young working couple, uh, the husband is working in this case, uh, wants to do a deal, is anxious to make a contribution, and all the bank does in return is up the bar, raises the bar with fresh obstacles. In another case I've been dealing with for 12 months, um, the bank saying to the person, you better be, think of selling out a public servant who has an income and who can make a contribution. Another young couple last week, um, again uh, in Ashburn, and there's quite a number in that area um, facing issues here, the, the rhetoric they hear up here, Tisha, and the language they hear in the House is incredibly disconnected to the reality that they're experiencing on the ground for the last number of years in terms of their dealings with the banks. They don't see themselves in Thank nimble, you. Tisha. Quite a lot of them see themselves in purgatory. And they're unsure or, in terms of where they're going to end up. And the problem is, the problem is, Tisha, that you and the government have facilitated the banks all the way here. Two years on talking tough isn't Thank enough you, and telling the banks they must do this and they must do that. We did put forward a debt settlement office bill where we, we put forward the idea of an independent debt settlement office which would arbitrate in relation to matters of household debt between the banks and the customer. I think the banks have been given a fair opportunity here. Thank you. Uh, and I think the, I would ask you that basic question. Why that insistence on the banks having a veto and why the insistence that the banks are facilitated all the way in relation to this situation? Thank you. Well, see, it actually, it actually identified the problem that's been here for a long time. It is interminable delays in dealing with people's cases. You yourself point out that you're dealing with a case for 12 months and there's no progress made. What we want to see, having put all these things in place here, Deputy Martin, is that there is a quick and effective solution brought about uh, for uh, the individual uniqueness of each case. That's what's needed. And that means that banks have got to sit down with each client and say, what are the circumstances? This is what you borrowed. This is, these are your circumstances now and work out a solution through many of the vari variations that are there because they are all individual. I know and you know that banks were saying we cannot do this matter because the question of the loophole in the law was never dealt with. Never dealt with. Well that question will be dealt with now. And banks themselves have said banks themselves have been at pain Sorry, sorry, please, please. Sorry, banks themselves have, banks themselves have been at pain to say that the consideration of house repossession is the last resort and the end of the line. But I want to see a situation where the banks don't have an excuse to say they haven't got all, the, uh, all of the paraphernalia 
to deal with this, and to deal with this swiftly and effectively and compassionately with each case. What's been wrong with you in past times is that you never listened. Now, what I want to do here, Deputy Martin, is work with these 100,000 people. I understand that the banks have now said that they've been training people for some considerable time because they lost the capacity to deal with this particular problem. And I now understand that they have trained personnel to work with clients individually to work out a solution and a resolution uh, of what the particular circumstances might be for any mortgage. And the last consideration, the last, is the question of house repossession. So the Minister for Finance tomorrow <coughs> will, uh, will address this matter. Uh, and I do hope uh, that timelines and targets and objectives will set out that in, from, from now on, having put all of this together, including the insolvency agency, that the situation will be that when banks do engage with client X or client Y or whatever else, that there will be a quick and speedy, compassionate resolution here that both parties will then adhere to in a restructured and reorganised fashion. That's what we want, Deputy Martin, that those 100,000 people can then contribute to the well-being of their locality and their economy, and we can offer them hope and confidence for the future. Thank you.